I'm going to start reading in the 12th verse if you'd like to follow along. Paul says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, I go after this, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. He has a goal. He has a goal to be like Jesus. He has a desire to be like Christ. To change his outward activities, but also to change his inward self. His attitudes, his feelings, his emotions, his desires even. How often is it that we realize that something we desire, we've got to forget? We've got to put it aside. It's never going to happen. You're not going to be any taller than you are, probably. Now, some of you younger ones still have hope. I didn't use anybody's name as an example. There are many things that we desire. Nothing wrong with it. But we have to come to grips with the fact that sometimes just the fact that we desire doesn't mean it's ever going to happen. And there's a thing called maturity. There's a thing called maturity. It's, a, it's an elusive thing. It's a sneaky thing. But there's times when maturity comes and we just realize, we come to grips that these desires are just not going to happen. They're just not ever going to happen. And it's silly to dwell on things that are not going to happen. I'm talking about things of the natural man. I'm talking about things of the natural world. Did you know that all the natural laws don't apply to the spiritual laws? Can I get an amen? Or at least a thank you, Jesus. Paul is trying to apprehend the person of Christ to be indwelled or in, and, and to himself become the embodiment of Christ. We used to sing a church song, sang it a lot when I came into the church, and that song was to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. And every time you sing that song, if, if you're singing it to Jesus, I'm not talking about performing. That's one of the great things about all of the gifted, talented people in this church. They don't come here to perform. They come here to minister. Amen. Amen? When they were singing this morning, I literally, I literally envisioned being in my home. Not this one. Not, not the bricks and boards here, but that one. Amen. Where I have a promise of residency through my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the difference. I'm not talking about singing and just singing to be singing. I'm talking about when your soul and your heart is singing to Jesus. Amen. And we'd sing to be like Jesus. And then I'd pray and I'd say, Lord, show me how to be like you. And he would. Amen? Amen. And oftentimes what he showed me, I don't like. <laughs> Come on. Amen. But oh, think about it from this perspective. If God loves us enough to show us the flaws that he's unhappy with, it's not to condemn us, it's to help us overcome them Amen. through his son Jesus Christ. So Paul, Paul was a dynamic leader. Paul, Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul was a man that just worked for God and was consumed. His whole life was invested into serving God. And he's saying, I'm trying to apprehend not wealth, not fame. I'm trying to apprehend Christ. Amen. Come on, pick up on that. Week before last, we talked about being created in the likeness and the image of God. Amen? Amen. And I just want to remind you, if you're created in the likeness and the image of God, I think that's good. Amen? Amen. And I think we should act like it. Amen. 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 And then the, the, the next Sunday, I, I minister to you about the dominion that God has given to us and how that we can take dominion over the things of this world. And we were designed to be in control. Amen. 
not controlled. Amen. 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 And this week, I'm showing you from one of the greatest examples in God's Word what we should be going after. God doesn't have any problem giving you the needs of your life. The Bible is full of promises that He'll give you the needs of your life. Come on now. He even tells us in one place He'll give us the desires of our heart. And brother and sister, let me tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this candidly and right to the point. The reason some of you have the problems you have is because of what you've desired and what you've asked God for and what He's let you have. Hello? Sometimes we should ask God, should I, should I have this? Should I be involved in this? Where, <laughs> hello? Right. Before we just go and ask in faith, believe it. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to try and apprehend Christ to be like Jesus. What was Jesus above everything else when he was on this earth? What was he above everything else when he was on this earth? <laughs> Savior, healer, healer. Deliverer. deliverer, come on, we're just getting started. It'll take all morning if we got them all. Peace. Everything, everything. But you put all that together in one word. He was a servant. He came to serve the needs of my life and your life and all the millions of people. By being our Savior, by being our healer, by being all of these things that you meant, and so much more. And Paul said, I want to apprehend Him. I don't want to obtain a reputation. I, want, I don't want to be known as the apostle, or the prophet, or the pastor. I just want to apprehend Christ. Amen. That's good. He said, brethren, <laughs> brethren, look around. <laughs> brethren and sistren. <laughs> There's just no good English way to say that, is there? <laughs> There's no good way to make a match. Brothers and sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's doing a little self-evaluation here. He said, I haven't made it where I want to go. I have not fully become what I need to be. I don't count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This is important. He singles it out. He puts it out there all by this one thing. How many million things could he bring up? He said, but this is the most important one. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. This is his method. This is not what he's going after. This is his method. Now what's he going after? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How is he going to apprehend? What's his method of apprehension? And what's his method to get to the prize, to get to the goal, to be who he needs to be? First things first. He has to forget the things that are behind. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's good. If I stumped my toe, I can't go unstump it. Amen. I can't unhurt your feelings. You can't untell a lie. Are these words true? Yes. <laughs> so the devil gets credit. Listen, listen. Over and over and over and over, you make one mistake. And then you carry it around and you carry it around and you carry it around and you bring it up or somebody else brings it up. And so the devil gets to clobber you over and over and over and over. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been in a boxing ring with gloves on. Most of you probably have never had that experience. There's a reason most people don't do it. Because one is usually the puncher and the other is the punchee. 
And I had a big E branded on my nose. <laughs> they put you in the ring according to your weight. That's how they decide who gets in the ring together. They don't put a 600 man in the ring with a 100 pound man. So, use your imagination, but in high school, the only time I've ever done this, I was a very thin person. I was skinny. I was still tall, but a skinny. So I would be in the boxing ring at PE with guys that were four foot tall. I was six foot tall. Because our weight was the same. And when you're taller, you have longer arms, right? Just part of it, unless you know, normally you have longer arms. And I have, I have eagle span. I mean, I, you know, <coughs> tip to tip, six foot four inches. So I should have the advantage, right? <laughs> no. Those little guys would get in close where my reach didn't advantage me. And even little bitty guys, little bitty puny guys, you take enough punches from a little bitty guy and you're gonna quit. <laughs> the coach used to tease me that I was the only guy that went into the match with, you know, when you wanna quit in boxing, what do you do? Throw in the towel. I was the only guy in PE that carried the towel around my neck. <laughs> I couldn't beat those little guys. They'd get in under me, in my reach and they'd just pound me. They wouldn't hit me hard, but just over and over and over. And then sooner or later, one of them would find out where my nose was and it only took one <laughs> tweak and I was done. <laughs> the devil uses that kind of a philosophy on us with our past. Punch and punch and punch and punch and punch and punch. And pretty soon, brothers and sisters, we can't take it anymore. Paul was trying to relate to us one of the brilliant keys to success as a Christian. He said, first thing I do is I forget those things that are behind. I don't need to remind this congregation that when you pray and you ask God to forgive you, that He separates you from your sin. And I don't need to, I do not need to rehearse that with you, do I? Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. If you prayed through this morning, I don't care what happened yesterday. God doesn't have it on the record. Amen. Thank the Lord. So the only way the devil can continue to harm us with our past is if we don't put it where it belongs. And Paul says, if I'm going to apprehend Christ, I'm going to forget the past. Forgetting those things that are behind. Forgetting the things where I failed him, where I came short, where I didn't measure up. Forgetting those desires that were probably not the right desires anyway. Amen. Amen.